Unlike others on YouTube this isn't a sponsored video, not because I have high moral and ethical standards, but rather because no one was willing to sponsor a channel of this size. Let's start off by unboxing the product. The reason I have bought this skin tool is because my Mirage died on the road the other day and I want to know why. This thing is just a sticker. Here we have some very basic setup instructions that do little more than to tell you to install the app. Here is the device itself. It is very simple, no physical buttons and only a single status LED. You would think that for 120 Canadian dollars plus tax they would include a case to protect the device when it is not in use. Unfortunately they do not, but there are plenty of third-party sellers on Amazon that do. In my 2015 Mitsubishi Mirage, the OBD2 port is located below the fuse panel access door, just above the resting position of the driver's left foot. While connecting the device, refrain from exerting pressure to the left or right, this could dislodge the OBD2 port if it does come loose, you can simply pop it back into place from behind. I have already turned on the vehicle. Unfortunately, since this app does not support landscape mode this video has to have these giant black bars on its sides. Let's start off by checking for device updates. Looking at the user manual, we can see that it is just a bunch of useless embedded YouTube videos. The support section just shows us some basic contact info. The live chat feature does not work. Looking at the skin tool section, we are going to go through these features one by one. Let's start by reading codes from all system modules. This takes about 45 seconds but has been sped up here. While scanning the ABS and traction control lights briefly illuminated on the dash. This screen indicates that no codes were found. However, I'm certain at least one trouble code should have been detected, as this very device previously identified a code. We'll give it another shot later. This clear codes page is incredibly similar to the previous read codes page, which also possesses the ability to clear codes. Quite an interesting design choice, isn't it? Under saved scans, we see a previously identified diagnostic trouble code. Interestingly, Blue Driver's key features including their code definition and fix recommendation are absent for this code they are classifying as very common. Under freeze frame, there's no data visible. This makes sense as the check engine light on my car isn't currently illuminated. This smog check section doesn't mean much to me as Ontario Canada ceased conducting emissions tests back in 2018. This is basically just showing us the same diagnostic trouble codes already accessible via the read codes and clear codes sections we already looked at. Blue Driver's tutorial on how to use this feature, as shown here, shows it detecting a diagnostic trouble code that even the most basic of scanners could have detected. Looking at California's Air Resources Board website link provided below, we can see how smog tests are conducted. According to their description, in California, technicians are required to perform an OBD2 check, visual and functional, during the smog check inspection. The technician visually verifies the warning light's functionality, and the smog check test equipment interacts with the onboard computer for fault information. If a fault is currently causing the light to be on, you need to have the malfunctioning component repaired before you can pass the inspection. Confirming the warning light is functional is done because brilliant people sometimes have the idea of physically removing the check engine light to resell the car. This is why the light activates when the car is started, so the driver can know the check engine light is functional. 
most importantly, according to this for a vehicle to fail the test. The check engine light must be on and a diagnostic trouble code must be stored. The next paragraph is as follows. In layman's terms, these readiness indicators prevent brilliant car owners from gaming the system by disconnecting the car's battery, thereby wiping the car's volatile memory, and with it, potentially, some stored diagnostic trouble codes before the smog test. This concept is also discussed in my battery replacement video. By doing this before connecting a scan tool, it's possible that no codes would be detected. This is because many issues need to be detected for a certain amount of time before triggering a trouble code. As for us non-government smog inspectors, this ability to view readiness indicators is rather pointless. We're perfectly aware of whether or not we've recently disconnected the car battery. Next up the Mode 6 menu. While these numbers might seem fun to look at, there is no need for us to compare the values against the minimum and maximums. That's what the car's computer does, and it'll throw a diagnostic trouble code if the test fails. Notably, some of the sensors have a maximum of 65,535. This is probably a glitch as 65535 is represented by a full set of ones in binary. The practical applications of this data are limited. In theory, you could spot issues before a diagnostic trouble code is triggered, but to me, fixing what isn't broken seems like a questionable strategy at best. Looking at the MIL status menu we can see some basic info about the check engine light such as distance driven since it was last on. I did not own the car 24,500 kilometers ago so I have no idea why the check engine light was on. Looking at the vehicle info menu we see some useless info that I could have found on Google for free. Such as the vehicles make model and year, its service schedule and a list of recalls they pulled off a government website. Looking at the service menu, we find instructions on how to reset the oil change light. It's useful, yes, but it's also information readily available with a quick Google search. Finally switching to the live data tab, we are given the option to select sensors which we want to monitor live. I will choose some at random for demonstration purposes. While this feature might appear impressive, it only displays standard OBD2 PIDs, linked in the description below is a list of these on Wikipedia. These aren't vehicle specific, and even some of the most budget-friendly scan tools on the market can read these data points. Most importantly, it doesn't provide any live transmission data such as temperature. Let's circle back to the read codes menu and start a new scan to see if it picks up my trouble code. As it goes through its paces, let's compare this device to its rivals. Perhaps the only extra this device might have over the most affordable skin tools out there is its ability to read SRS and ABS trouble codes. I didn't dare to test this feature, fearing a dealer visit to clear a code if this device failed to do so. The most economical skin tools, like those ELM327 devices, can be paired with an app called CVTZ50 which can read transmission live data and trouble codes, something this blue driver device couldn't manage. In conclusion, I'm no nearer to understanding why my car died on me, but my wallet is certainly $113 lighter. Fingers crossed, I'm still within my Amazon return window. Well, lo and behold, a code was detected. Isn't that a marvel? I'll clear it, so I can feel like I'm getting some value out of this junk. Thanks for watching feel free to leave questions and comments down below.